What's going on, guys? This is James Allen. I am recording this on Monday, December 1st, 2025. In this episode, I want to talk about the opposing philosophies of CASPA and ICP. One of them believe the blockchain is a ledger of truth. The other one is attempting to package the cloud inside the blockchain. And these two philosophies affect the engineering design uh, of the entire system, as you can imagine. And I think by sharing these opposing philosophies to you guys, um, you will see the contrast more vividly and you will understand why I flip from ICP to Casper. It will become obvious why I did a set flip, as they call it in the hood. Set flipping is when a person leaves one gang to the opposite gang, right? <laughs> so I did a set flip with ICP. I think by sharing these uh, opposing philosophies with you guys, uh, you'll understand why. I set flip. Now, this video was a little hard for me to sort of like, you know, um, you know, come up with because I didn't want to make it too technical. I wanted to keep it accessible to everyone. So to, to make it so that everyone can understand, I've just reduced it to four points, four simple points that I'm going to get into. So um, uh, let's go. One more thing I want to say before I start is that uh, if you want a little bit more clarity and in depth. Uh, I do have a Medium article version of this, so uh, check out my article on Medium if you want to read this technical um, uh, perspective. I'm going to leave a link in the description. So let's talk about the opposing philosophies of CASPA and ICP. Like I said, one believes the blockchain is a ledger of truth, CASPA. The other one is attempting to package the cloud inside the blockchain, ICP. And this shows throughout their entire protocol, both at the smart contract level and at the network level. So let's get into those four points. The first one is Casper VProgs compute off-chain, ICP canisters compute on-chain. Uh, the second one is uh, Casper VProgs are instantly composable, but ICP canisters are more like isolated containers. The third one is the Casper protocol scales through geometry, while the ICP protocol scales through sharding. The last one is I, uh, CASPA is truly decentralized and ICP has bottlenecks. So these are the four points. Let's get into them one by one. The first one is uh, VProx compute off-chain, canister compute on-chain. And that's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, VProgs do not do any computation on a blockchain. In instead, they execute locally on their node and they submit a state transition commitment and a proof to the blockchain by state transition commitment. What I mean is that uh, the VProg shows that the state um, uh, went from A to B uh, because of the computation. As a result of the computation, the state changed from A to B. Uh, so it commits that to the blockchain. It also commits a proof that lets the network uh, verify that the computation was done correctly and that the state is what it's supposed to be. Um, uh, so uh, the, the VProg does not treat the blockchain as a compute layer. It just treats it as a ledger. So it, it, it stores those state commitments and a proof that the computation was done correctly. Everything is lightweight. ICP, on the other hand, thinks um, uh, the blockchain is just a more secure Web 2. That's really what ICP thinks in terms of philosophy. It thinks um, uh, Web 3 is a more secure version uh, of Web 2. Uh, so it does all the computation on chain, which creates a lot of re-execution and uh, forces a lot of things that doesn't really need to be on a blockchain to be on a blockchain. Like the front end, for an example, has no reason to be on a blockchain. And there are many other components outside of the front end that has no reason to be on a blockchain at all. But because internet computer treats the blockchain as like a more secure version of Web2, it treats the blockchain as a cryptographic version of Web2, right? So it puts everything on it, <laughs> front end, <laughs> back end logic, uh, images, it, it stores everything on a chain. And that creates a lot of waste. A lot of, um, uh, a lot of things are persisting that doesn't really need to be persisted on such a high cryptographic environment. And uh, yeah, uh, a lot of re-execution, a lot of waste. So uh, if you look at the canister smart contract, for an example, they, um, they have four gigabyte of heat memory and five, no, 400 gigabyte of stable memory. Stable memory is the state, right? That's the state that you want to persist. So 400 gigabyte of state memory or stable memory, as they call it in the canister, makes it clear that like ICP thinks 
the blockchain is more uh, is a more secure version of Web two. So a lot of waste, uh, very clunky. <laughs> it's just a giant container. That's really what the uh, ICP canister smart contracts are. They are giant containers. Okay, let's move to the second point. Um, VProgs are instantly composable and ICP canisters are isolated containers. I did mention that they are containers, right? And that's clear given that they have four gigabyte of heap memory and 400 gigabyte of stable memory, which is how the state is persisted. Uh, but let's look at VProgs. VProgs are instantly composable. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is that VProgs can interoperate with one another instantly at execution, right? They could talk to one another. They could execute one computation synchronously with other VProgs like this. And this is very important, right? Because when you're talking about like financial transaction, you need the, 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 the execution to be atomic and synchronous, right? Because you don't want partial failures so that money is stuck. You want all or nothing systems, right? Uh, financial uh, protocols, you want all or nothing systems so that there's no partial failures, money's not stuck, or you know, <clears throat> uh, you, you don't get a, a, a partial success that is even worse than a total failure. Right, so it, it's clear when you look at this instant composability that the Casper team wanted the network to be a financial protocol. If if they didn't, they wouldn't make sure that VProgs are instantly composable. Meaning, VProg A can call VProg B instantly to execute a computation together before anything even gets on a blockchain. That's very important, right? Ethereum made that very popular. People worship Ethereum for having this instant composability. And Casper VProgs are also instantly composable, right? Super important because it shows that the, the, the people who are designing a protocol really want this to be a financial system, right? Now let's look at um, ICP canisters. ICP canisters not only persist state, but they are more like isolated containers. They cannot do this instant composability that VProg smart contracts can. Instead, they use messages to talk to one another. They use inner canister messages. And that, there's problems with that, right? Because this can introduce latency, ordering mismatch, and partial failures, right? So your money could end up being stuck on internet computer. And when you look at the fact that canisters are more like isolated containers, which uses messages to talk to one another, which again, like I said, introduces introduces latency and ordering issues and partial failures. Um, you see that whoever designed internet computer designed those canisters to behave more like microservices. Like microservices are, you know, um, uh, things you could build in a Web two environment. They're they're very popular in cloud environments where you you build a service for a user to do one thing really well. Right. But if the user needs another service, they have to call another system. Right. So canisters are more like microservices on a, on a cloud rather than smart contracts on a blockchain because they are using this inner messaging system to talk to one another. And because they are using that, like I said, it's not an all or nothing system. You could have partial failures and money can get stuck. Workflow can get out of sync. And that actually has happened to one of my clients. I have helped a client before who got their money stuck on in that computer. And if you're still watching, I hope you're a fan. Uh, you're still a fan. You know I'm telling the truth, <laughs> right? So it, it shows that the people who designed internet computer wanted it to behave more like a cloud environment. So these canisters act like microservices. It's not really built to be a financial protocol because it doesn't have that um, uh, synchronous instant composability. Canisters are asynchronous, not synchronous. Let's move on to the third point. Now we're looking at it on, at a protocol level. Casper scales through geometry. ICP scales through sharding. What do I mean by that? Well, Casper scales through geometry is rather st straightforward, right? Rather than um, uh, keeping its blockchain structure a, an actual chain, it changes the geometry to a graph, right? And this graph allows it to accept multiple blocks at the same time, which it which is then ordered deterministically through mathematics, 
right? So that's how Casper scales, very brilliant mathematical system. Casper basically invented a new transportation system rather than go with a standard um, singly linked blockchain that everyone else is following. Brilliant, original genius. Now let's look at ICP, how does it scale? ICP scales through sharding. And what I mean by that is instead of having uh, one blockchain, it has a bunch of mini blockchains, right? And it calls them subnets. Now that's fine, right? Because you have multiple different blockchain each in separate subnets and each subnet consists of about 13 nodes. But here's the problem. Uh, by scaling that way, ICP sacrifices security for throughput, right? Because instead of um, uh, the smart contracts on ICP being protected by the entire network, the canister is now protected by just the subnet validators, right? So instead of having a thousand machines or however large the network is, the ICP canister is only protected by the 13 nodes in its respective subnet because again, ICP scales through charting. So it's not as safe, it's not as secure, nowhere near in fact, as Caspa, because Caspa, every reprog, every transaction enjoys UTXO level security from the entire blockchain. The entire main chain protects every smart contract on Caspa as opposed to ICP because it, it scales to sharding. A canister is only protected by its subnets and each subnet have about 13 nodes. Now there are subnets which have bigger, a higher number of nodes like fiduciary subnets, like financial subnets, they may have like 30, 30 or 100 nodes, but that's still nothing compared to a single high hash power proof of work network guarding every smart contract on, on the protocol, right? So CASPA, much safer, much more secure. It actually behaves as a blockchain as opposed to ICP by sharding into a bunch of mini blockchain. It compromises security because, you know, each canister now doesn't have is not protected by the entire protocol. It's only protected by the respective subnet. The last one is also very important. That is Casper is truly decentralized as opposed to ICP. It has bottlenecks. It has bottlenecks because there are control points in internet computer. Let's get to the first one because the first one is pretty straightforward. If you want to create um, uh, a Casper node, you don't need permission from anyone. Uh, not even to create <clears throat> an RPC node. Uh, RPC stands for remote procedure call, by the way. The RPC node on Caspa give direct read and write access to the blockchain, to the, to the blockchain state. And anyone could fire up a, a, an RPC node. I think it's, I looked at the docs. I think if you want your Caspa node um, uh, to, to, to serve RPC endpoint, you just gotta configure the appropriate port and your Casma node is, is serving RPC endpoint. So it's entirely permissionless and anyone who, um, uh, who, who access that RPC endpoint have direct read and write access to the blockchain state. Now let's look at internet computer. Internet computer uh, do not give you direct access to the blockchain state. If a user is requesting something from a canister, that request has to go through a boundary node. And that boundary node then routes it to the correct subnet. So you have two issues here, the boundary node and the subnet routing, right? The boundary node are control points because Definity controls the boundary nodes. All the boundary nodes are in the hands of Definity. They did speak about having plans on opening it up to the community, but I don't know how's that going. But right now, it's in the hands of Definity. And that's very dangerous, right? Because not only this creates a control point, but this gives it DDoS vulnerability, right? This gives it DDoS vulnerability. Some, some person, a smart person, could flood these boundary nodes with requests and choke Definity, choke internet computer. Because all the requests must go through the boundary nodes. Those are bottlenecks. Very dangerous, guys. And... Like I said, the boundary nodes routes the request to the appropriate subnet. And this subnet routing is also a control point. And why did Definity do this? Definity do this, did this because they are following a cloud-like system. Clouds behave that way, right? Clouds usually have like CDNs and load balancers that sends their user requests to the correct um, uh, uh, data center. So internet computer is structured the exact same way. Again, their philosophy is, uh, Let's attempt to package the cloud on a blockchain. As opposed to Casper's philosophy, 
let's be a decentralized, a truly decentralized protocol that's highly performant and highly secure. And looking at these four points, it becomes obvious which one is superior. Casper is a ledger of truth. It keeps it lightweight. And the more you look at ICP, not only you see that it is over engineered, but it looks like a drift from what blockchain is intended to be. So Definity, with all due respect, um, uh, if, if, if I were you, I would pivot because <laughs> it's not looking good, man. If I was you, I would pivot before it gets too embarrassing and uh, you just look you just lose a bunch of money in front of people. All right. In any case, I hope this was useful. Don't forget to check out that Facebook group called uh, Caspa Insight. Like I said, big shout out to them for letting me post in their group. I hope this uh, video was enjoyable and accessible to everyone. I'm telling you how I understand the situation. I hope everything was clear. You know what to do, my Caspians. Don't forget to press that like button and support me on Patreon. I will see you next time.